So first of all, let me start with, I, I love the first season. I'm really happy to get to talk to you. Um, I read that you are from Wales, and I'm just I curious am. if that means that you are an AFC Wrexham fan. Oh, I, I'm so into that. It's been so exciting for us. My mum actually um, grew up near Wrexham, and I spent time as a child in Wrexham Farmer's Market. And it's kind of, I just can't believe it's happened still. And um, yeah, it's also led to that, like, I think Ryan Reynolds' film was one of the, fir- the first film on Netflix to have, like, Welsh subtitles. Um, just like an incredible thing to happen to quite a small, slightly ignored place. And also Wrexham fans are amazing. So, yeah. I, uh, I, he turned me into a fan and I think that season two is going to be amazing considering yeah. what happens, what will happen at the end. Yeah. And it's like, I've got, I know people there because of where my mum's from and it's just been amazing for the community and like they've created jobs Um, they've been very, also like been very generous with how they've like trained people up through that documentary. So Yeah. It's fantastic. We're on the same page. Um, so one of the things about this series is that when you were offered the role, um, yeah. you, I'm just curious if you, I mean, how much did you, was there any debate in your mind about taking it? Because it could be a 10 year job. It could be something that you're doing literally for 10 years. Yeah. I kind of, I, um, I've always wanted to do something where I could revisit a character. I've always kind of, cause you feel such a kind of, you feel kind of a grief when you say goodbye to them. Um, and so I was really excited by the idea that I could like be with this character for years and see her change and also kind of be with a group of actors for that much time. Like um, it's something that I hadn't done before. And, you know, being on stage, being in a movie, being kind of one off in a series or being in it completely from like season to season, is it's so radically different. And so I kind of really, this was an itch I really wanted to scratch and... Um, yeah, I can't believe that I've got to be in a kind of a recurring character and she's Gladriel. Um, yeah. Uh, so no, what, I was just like, yes, we'll do that. No, and I'm just wondering because anyway, um, you've obviously no, learned. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm crying across you. Yeah, you've you've learned, I'm sure, a lot of skills, new skills since yeah. joining the series. Uh, what's the one that you are most surprised you've learned and mastered? So this is there's two. The first one was I thought I could swim. And then after my first swimming lesson, he was like, okay, so we need to go back to basics. And I was like, oh, what? I thought I could do this. So now I can properly swim, which was a skill I didn't really need, know I needed to learn. Now I can't believe I was ever in the sea. Um, something I just never thought I was going to be able to do was the two-handed sword fight because I'm very unambidextrous. Um and that was amazing. And that came through encouragement and the most incredible teaching from like loads of people within the stunt department and my wonderful um, stunt double Rosalie Buttons kind of really believing in me, but also kind of got to watch her for five episodes doing lots of my stunts. And she's a dancer and stuff, which kind of worked really well um, for me to like observe her, someone playing an elf. Um, so yeah, to be able to do the whole of that double handed sword fight stunt something I never imagined. And it's so fun. Like it's as fun as you think it is. Like my, my inner child was just going bonkers. I loved the, uh, since we can talk about spoilers is season one, yeah. uh, talk a little bit about filming the big reveal at the end and how you and Charlie maybe talked before stepping on set to, you know, to talk about maybe the scene or was it one of these things where you, you didn't talk about it and you, got on set and that's where the, the the magic happened. No, we talked about everything a lot and we had a lot of time um, because of the weird circumstances in which we kind of filmed this. Um, so no, we discussed it loads and we were so excited for it finally to happen. And we kind of rehearsed, but Charlie had never really gone full south on until we were on set. So that first time where he actually was like, I've had many names. I was like, never seen Charlie like that. It's kind of frightening. Um, it was just, um, I felt like we'd kind of, it made, we'd like earned that moment as well, um, that I feel kind of, Charlie is a wonderful actor and also a wonderful man who made me feel super comfortable. And I think that meant we could like really kind of push ourselves and create this chemistry between these characters that then it ultimately was really satisfying when we saw it crumble. So it was really fun. So how long did you actually film that scene? Was it all in one day? Um, could you talk a little bit about that? No, we had like three days to shoot kind of the first reveal and then the 
bit on the raft. Um, and the bit on the raft was really fun because we kind of explored loads of different things and then kind of ended up with that kind of screaming of two kind of forces against each, against each other. What was really funny about that was that it was obviously like so much secrecy. Um, but like occasionally as actors, you kind of forget your lines. And Charlie forgot the line. What will you, what will they say when they know that Sauron lives because of you and called line and then kind of Hamish, the first AD on the massive speakerphone said that throughout the kind of booming throughout the whole studio and beyond. And that was very funny. Um, but also it's kind of, it was really fun to go back to the raft because we'd filmed loads of that at the beginning and it kind of was good for us as actors that we were going back to this familiar place. Um, but it was just so much fun. It was such drama. It felt like Shakespearean, which I loved. Do you think there was any, even the smallest percentage of Galadriel that was drawn in by Sauron? Uh, or do you think it was completely 100%, you know, no chance? I don't know. I kind of want to keep it ambiguous as well. Um but I think the thing with Gladwell is that she knows that should she go to the dark side, things will be catastrophic. And I kind of feel that, like, I've been thinking a lot about, like, what the gift of foresight, like, would actually feel like. And I'm like, is it just, like, increased anxiety in a way? Because you have all these ideas of what could be, what could be, what could be. And I think one of her big what could be's is, like, what if I'm bad? Um, but I don't know. I mean, they definitely vibe because they're very powerful. But... I'm not sure. <laughs> when you were cast, or even now, um, how much did you feel that you wanted to read everything, learn everything about Lord of the Rings, because you know you're going to run into fans that are going to ask you like yeah. real deep questions? And how much is it sort of like, I can only, you know what I mean? Where's that line? Yeah. Um, I, I really wanted to be like very immersed in the feeling of Middle Earth. Because I think that kind of a big part of his writing isn't and isn't just kind of about the characters, but it's about the world itself and what it means to kind of exist within that world. Do you know where there are Balrogs and there are kind of um, things have significance? Um, um, and so I just bought the Silmarillion audiobook and kind of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit audiobook. I'd never read the Silmarillion and just had them on all the time. Like if you saw any of our cast walking around or walking around Auckland with like headphones in, they probably weren't listening to music. They were listening to like the Silmarillion. Um, and I kind of, yeah, just wanted to be more immersed in it. And now I feel like I know quite a lot about it. But I think what's quite nice about the Tolkien community is because his um because his writing was so vast is that nobody feels they're completely an expert on it. And it's quite a nice place to be that everyone kind of is happy to learn from each other and kind of you'll be an expert in a particular part of it, say. You'll meet different people who have very different insights and kind of the philosophy of it as well. I mean, you could just talk about it and learn about it forever. And I've started that journey now. And it's really nice. I have to go, but just I have to ask you one last thing real quick. I know you're filming season two and I'm a huge fan. What can you tease about season two and how has it been going? Um, I see what I can tease about season two is mm, there's, <laughs> there's, there's some very interesting villains coming. Thank you for your time. And seriously, congrats on the series. Thank you.